However, Mr. Dallas did appear at the church to marry you that very next morning, and you didn't show up. Why? Mr. Dallas informed me that this marriage would be merely a marriage of convenience, and not to expect him to carry out the duties usually designated to a husband and father. I wouldn't have shown up either. <laughs> I never said that. You see, Your Honor, when I get married, it's going to be for the right reasons. So my daughter can look around her and see a home filled with love and honesty, giving and sharing. A happy home, with Daddy coming from work every night and Wendy running into his arms as he lifts her up and he says, There's my little girl. There's my little Wendy. Oh. <laughs> That's when I'll get married, Your Honor, and not before. Thank you. It's <laughs> oh, the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. It's a fairy tale. It's not real. Neither is Bambi. Doesn't matter. It's moving, isn't it? Remember the bunny? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No more questions. Watch this, kid. You'll learn something. Miss David, I admire your integrity and good sense. That movie you made in the parking lot back of Felder's drugstore. All those men, were they firemen or were they police officers? What? They were out of their uniforms so fast I hardly had time to notice. I never Just yes or no, Miss David. Were they cops? I don't know. Firemen. What... Were they firemen? Yes or no, Miss David? Were they firemen? Yes or no? No! Just as I thought cops. <laughs> I object. Strike that from the record. Miss David. Just a few more questions. The court knows that you used to be employed by me. Do you recall any time speaking to me about having children? No, I don't believe so. Fact is, you're not too crazy about children, are you, Miss David? Of course I am. Do you remember an adorable little boy, one Hector Amaris, you hurled obscenities at while walking with me through Central Park one day? He was mugging me. <laughs> you didn't fact try to strike him about the head back and tush isn't that right i tried to hold on to my purse and now you want the custody of your own child <laughs> so you can bend and twist her so she has nothing to do but grow up like you you make me sick enough stand Mr. no more questions oh uh, miss david yes i thought you were the best thing in the movie <laughs> Miss David, you may step down, please. You too, Malou. Impressed? That was horrible. Thank you, Dallas. That means a lot to me. I can't believe it. Is this what it all comes to? Not at all. I may have to get ugly. I call Lurleen David to the stand. What do you think? I think we're in good shape now. She's a good person. She's decent and she's honest. Raise your right hand, please. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. The whole truth. Yes, I do. May God strike me dead. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Be seated. <laughs> Mrs. David, you are the infant's grandmother, are you not? Yes, I am. Now, on the night in question, <laughs> you brought your granddaughter to see her father, Mr. Dallas, at his apartment. Would you tell the court what happened? I will tell you exactly what happened. I went to Jody's apartment, and there was this woman there with some men, and she said that if I didn't get out of there in 10 seconds, they were going to beat the living hell out of me. <laughs> and if I ever tried to come back and get Wendy, they were going to kill me. Your Honor, I object. Overruled. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. David, would you tell the court, please, who was the aforementioned woman? The woman in Mr. Dallas' apartment with that gang of homosexuals was Jody Dallas. Dallas, what are you doing? What are these notes mean that we've been taking, huh? What good are they? What good are these law books, for God's sakes? Nobody tells the truth around here. I mean, am I going mad or what? Restrain him, restrain him, please. Why don't you just tar in front of me, for God's sake? Mr. Sakes? Dallas, one more word out of you, and I am going to hold oh, you in contempt. One more word? All right, I have plenty of more words, Your Honor. How about Take mockery, you know, huh? And disgrace, know. huh? Because I've been hearing these words ever since this travesty began. You're killing me here! Court will reconvene at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Now, look, Dallas, I can't blame you for what you did yesterday. I guess I really blew it, huh? Blew? 
What about tornadoed? Actually, I was thinking about this as they were leading you out. The expression on the judge's face. She was obviously moved by your passion and fervor. You think we still have a chance? No. <laughs> you can't ignore the facts, Dallas. The judge is a woman. Carol is a woman. You are not a woman. Try as you may. I call Jody Dallas to the stand. There goes. Might as well know. He's going to be rough on you. Don't worry, Miller. By this time, I think I'm immune. <clears throat> Mr. Dallas, let me remind you, you're still under oath. Are you the same Jody Dallas who lived with Dennis Phillips, the quarterback? Just how many different men have you lived with, Mr. Dallas? Answer the question, please. It's none of your business. It is the business of this court, Mr. Dallas, to ascertain whether your home environment is conducive to raising a child. It seems to me as if a decision has already been reached regarding my environment. Mr. Dallas, this court is not about to draw conclusions until all facts are presented. Let me add, you're not helping your case any by not answering these questions. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Dallas, what do you do? I direct commercial. I mean with a man. Oh, please. Exactly. What are the mechanics involved? That's an insulting question. Did you ever frequent a bar known as Barney's? Was that you? <laughs> Mr. Dallas, I don't have to remind you that not answering the question is contempt. Fine. Because I'm not about to be humiliated and my lifestyle desecrated anymore by these examinations. I'm not going to lose my temper. I refuse to lose my self-respect. So if you want to hold me in contempt, it's fine. I've proven, at least to myself, what kind of father I am. I've never exposed Wendy to anything that was harmful or unfavorable to her health, either mentally or physically. And whether Wendy lives with me or not, at least she'll know that I've always wanted her and that I'll always be there for her. And that's something no one can ever take away. If you all excuse me, I'm going home. Your Honor, I ask you to realize the strain that my client has been under and not hold him in contempt. Mr. Malou, I make my decisions based on fact, not personal emotion. And may I say your client presented his case more honestly and directly than you ever have. <laughs> we'll reconvene at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time I will render my decision. Court's adjourned. Not a dream. Thank you. <laughs> wow, wow. I don't know how you did that, Corinne, but don't ever stop. <laughs> it's not Corinne. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Eunice? here what are you doing here well, what do you think i'm doing here we'll do it somewhere else <laughs> it was just so sneaky corinne sneaky you went out on him it is four o'clock in the morning you want a nitpick two-timer <laughs> man stealer hey, hey hey come on come on now hey what's going on here come on okay break break touch this is ridiculous you have to make a choice we can't keep doing this well, we could try it for a while. Dutch, I agree with Corinne. This is just stupid. Now you have to choose. Corinne. Dutch. Yeah. Are you serious? How can you just say Corinne? 
Eunice. Settled. Okay, darling. Dutch. Oh, come on, you guys. You come in here in the middle of the night. You tell me I got to choose. That ain't right. I got no control of my life here. Well, like it or not that you are in the middle, and like it or not, you have to choose, because if you don't, we're just going to have to keep doing this. Fine. I'll let you know next week. <laughs> Dutch. Okay, okay. I know I got to. But it isn't easy. I mean, as much as I'm mad at you, Eunice, I still love you. And as much as I love her, that's how much I love you. So I know I gotta do the only thing I can. I gotta make a decision, firm and final. And whoever I choose, the other one has gotta understand. I agree. Go ahead, Dutch, make your choice. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. One of you has got to go. Who it is, I do not know, and this hurts worse than a broken toe. Once there was a guy named Joe. He fell in love with Ruth and Flo. He chose Ruth, said, Flo, go blow, and this is going very slow. Hooty tooty, hoop dee hee, I love yous and yous love me. We can't stay here, all us three, so one of you has got to leave. Reva, Reva, fee fo fum, one of you'll be mighty glum when I choose the other one, but then I'll feel like a dirty old bum. Who that's lost? The it's the postman, he will know who should stay and who should go. Hefty, hefty, rick, rack, rock. One of you, one of you should take a walk. <laughs> <laughs>